how did it feel to make the phone call to let Miss Alice Johnson know that it was over, she was coming home? I think she thought it was a routine phone call with her attorneys and she was surprised and excited that I was on the phone. And then I was a little bit shocked because she was very calm and right. I had assumed she knew. So I just was like, wait, she doesn't know? And Alice was like, no, what? And I was like, uh -huh. you're going home. Like, I can like cry thinking about it. it hearing her scream, just to know that like we changed one person's life, you know, is like, we cried maybe on the phone for like three minutes straight, like everyone was just crying, and then I have to get it together. That's all right. Um, I understand. It's, it's emotional. It, I mean, it, people just understand. Just because they, I mean, I think people might think like, oh, Kim went to the White House, had this conversation, it was done, and that's it. This, I saw this seven months ago, and I have been daily phone calls with the White House maybe a dozen emails a day trying to get letters, letter from the warden. I mean, I, I have to give credit to where Alice's whole team has sure. been working on this for years. So I do want to give credit where credit is due to everyone that's been working so hard on this for so long for her. What was it about this case, though, that, that struck you so much? I mean, why, why her? Because, you know, there's, people are going to say, well, look, there's thousands and thousands of people in prison. You know, what about my uncle? What about my yeah. stepson? What, what about, what was it about this case that just grabbed you? Well, I, I do think there's something to, I had happened to be on Twitter at that exact moment and saw that come across my feed that one of the people that I follow posted a story on her and I watched it and I just really felt for her because I felt like she's a good person. You, could, you can see that in her, that she lost her longtime job, got a divorce, her son died. It just all of her, everything was going so bad for her and she got desperate and she had four other, you know, babies that she had to take care of and she was desperate and she made choices that I feel like honestly, you know, maybe not to that extreme, but when you're in a desperate situation, you'll do whatever you ha have to do to take care of your kids. And I know that I would do anything for my kids. And so I just, I just felt this connection to her like instantly that I just... I wanted to help her. I mean, you have such a huge platform. You got Ivanka Trump's phone number. I mean, it must have felt like, hey, listen, I've got to do something. But the meeting with President Trump, now that's a whole other level. Yeah. How did that happen? Um, well, when I initially called Ivanka, I said I would love a meeting with your dad. And then that took about six or seven months to get. And so... Once we got our, you know, the file really strong, we were able to um, plan a meeting and it happened to be on Alice's birthday and that was the date they picked. And so I was like, okay, this is just all aligned. It's, this is, the stars are all in our favor today. I just feel that this is the right day to do it. And um, so you go in, we go in. That's crazy. You got to know yeah. for normal people. Kim Kardashian yeah. going into the Trump into the White West House. The West Wing. The Oval was, Office. Yeah. I but, have to say, I never get starstruck. Huh. I was starstruck over the Oval Office. Yeah. Like, that Oval Office is so powerful. Yeah. I just, I literally had to take a second and take it all in. And just inside. This is not a movie set. Yeah. Like, it was, it really felt powerful and felt... Like, you can just feel the history in there. So you've been, you know, tough on Trump at times. I mean, yeah. you're, not, you're not a Republican. How did you handle that? Well, I think, like, for me, I was very focused. I knew that if I have this meeting, I can't go in there and talk about all the policies that I don't agree with. And I've always had just a very open dialogue with Jared about how I felt and have been even so honest to say, look, Trump is the last person I thought that would have done this, but he did and he pulled through. And so when I got the meeting, I knew there was going to be tons of backlash. I knew people wouldn't understand it. And at that point, I had to make the decision that this was bigger than me, that I, so I'm worried about my brand it's like, and a, and a woman's been in jail for 22 years almost. That just, to me, there was like, 
it wasn't even a question. Mm -hmm. Like I would have taken the backlash, no matter what the outcome would have been, just to try for her. It's just really amazing to hear you say that. I mean, you didn't know her. Why did you feel that this was worth taking that kind of risk? A lot of celebrities to this day are scared to go and be in a picture with Donald Trump. A lot of athletes won't even go in the building. Why did you make a different choice? And, and I do still respect their choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone can do what they want to do. I never judge other people. Um, and I do think sometimes situations are different. But I just am focused. And I could separate my feelings on certain policies. To me, it wasn't about policies. It was about I can change someone's life. And yeah. if I have the, the opportunity to do that, like it just wasn't even a question for me. So just just indulge me for a second what did he say what did you say i mean how does this i mean i want to see the movie in my head i mean yeah. did he get up did he shake your hand did he hug you did you salute i mean give me something that i can work with i walk in and you know i had met him before mm. before he was the president a few times so it was a hug and sat down and and he was like okay so so what's going on he said, well, what are we here for? And I said, I'm here because I really want to know why did you kick Chloe off The Apprentice? <laughs> it was a laugh and it was funny. And then we got into business. And, you know, he felt it. He was compassionate. He was sympathetic to her. He said, you know, this is a really long time that she's been in here. Like, this just isn't fair. He knew that this is the right thing to do. Of course, no good deed goes unpunished. So you go in there, you get this victory. Uh, some people are very skeptical, yeah. all right? So they're like, uh, I'm just going to throw them at you. You tell me yeah. who's right and who's wrong. Uh, number one, this whole thing is just a PR stunt for you. You're a master media person, and you know how to get media attention, and this is just a way for you to get attention for yourself. True or false? That's very false. I mean, I could literally walk outside and it'll like it'll be some ridiculous story so you you're not desperate for, for so, media attention you don't have to do anything extra to get it no i mean i think these days i'm trying to dodge it and stay away from it gotcha uh number two uh trump is using you as a political pawn so now you're sort of you you you've endorsed him in a way you've kind of given him legitimacy you might be in a campaign video uh he used you i think I think Kanye's already given him legitimacy, so I don't, you know, in that way. So I, I was working on this before, so I don't, like, for being, I don't think I would be used, mm -hmm. you know, and, and at the end of the day, he heard me out. We got the job done, so I, I don't think, like, what could he really use me for? Um, and when you, when you say Kanye gave him legitimacy, what, what, do you, what do you mean by that? I mean, Kanye, you know, co-signed and said he, he loves his personality and, and loves him. So I just, if he already got that, that if he was trying check. to use me, yeah. like, in, like how? Because he already kind of got, you know, a big thing, you know from Kanye, I think. So yeah. I, I also saw people like, well, why, why don't you talk to him about this and about, you know, so immigration other, and so many other things care about, that I care about. But I just have to stay focused and I have to know that if there's the only person in the world that could have done this for her, why wouldn't I go talk to that person if I had the opportunity to? Forget about my fears. Forget about my life. That was the right thing to do. You know, this isn't the first political thing that you've done. I mean, you've, you've spoken out on Armenian issues. Uh, you've engaged a little bit with Planned Parenthood, some of the gun safety stuff. Uh, that is something that I, that I asked, like, behind the scenes, not to the president. But, you know, are we going to, what's going on? Is the conversation of the Armenian genocide being recognized ever going to happen? And, you know, what, so, yeah, there's, there's things that I do care about and things that I want to know and things I would, I would love to be more involved. Just seeing this success was, I think, gives the whole team hope. Yes. And if we, if I can be used as the vessel and they could all use me, they can use me.
you know, the, the attorneys. They can, I think everyone on, this, on that side knows that, that I'm, we're all in it together and we just all have the same goal. And if I am the voice that goes in and tries to, I mean, there's over 3,000 people in the same exact situation as Alice. And it's not that, it, it just so happened to be that Alice was on my screen at that moment, at that time when I was on, but it doesn't mean that we're gonna stop here. What have you learned in this past six months, seven months, eight months, that makes you say, I want to keep doing this. Because some people will say, listen, one and done. You got a victory, walk away. You're yeah. saying, I got a victory, I want more. I told Sean, the attorney, I was like, can we start a firm? Like, I, I've, I've looked, I was like, let's do this and mm -hmm. like just get the best people together. If I could just be the vessel, I'm, I could bring your awareness. Your dad was a lawyer. Yeah. Is this in your blood? I really think that it is. Anyone that knows me, like my whole other team of attorneys, um, Every time I go in there, I'm like, God, if there wasn't the long college process, I would be an attorney. But I just, I, I researched um, that in the state of California, I could assist an attorney for three years and just and then, take the bar. And then be bar eligible? Yeah, this, so this, you never this know. Could go, this could go. Uh, now, once you get the law degree, people are going to say, would you ever run for office? Oh, I don't, I don't think that's even on my mind. Trump's president, it could happen. I know, that's why Kanye loves him. It's the idea that anything can happen. So, could anything happen with uh I guess, never say never, but that's not gonna be like a Kim's run. Uh, that's, okay. that's not where I'm, yeah. what I'm going for. I just wanna help, you know, starting one person at a time. And I think sometimes if more people would just put their personal feelings aside and talk about really important issues that have to be discussed, then so much more can get done. You know, politics is rough. I mean, I know, I know. I know being a celebrity is rough, but DC is really rough. Are you sure you want to stick your fork in that socket again? I mean, you could walk away. Nobody will be mad at you. Yeah. Um, I am never going to claim to be the most political person, but I know that I had a feeling inside when I helped someone and just seeing the videos. I mean, I was crying watching the videos and, but seeing her just be reunited with her family. That video. That video. Yeah. You know, it, it, you sound like a mama bear now. It, it, it's being a mom and having these three little people in your life, is that, is that affecting the way you want to use your platform in any way? I just, I don't know, it feels that way. Absolutely. I mean, I think I'm always going to be me and I always will do things that make me feel good about myself or live my life or film my show and, you know, whether just I'll still always be me, but there's a new side of me. I think just like past life experiences, becoming a mom situations that I've been in that have really changed me. I think I've realized that I can't just so if I have this platform, it would honestly be such a waste if I didn't use it to change someone's life. Yeah. You know, you talk about redemption and second chances. In some ways, you're fighting to give her a second chance, um, but then people try and throw stuff about your past on you. I think you're in a position now to give maybe advice to folks because you come under a lot of fire. You keep on keeping on. You, you keep achieving things. How do you do that? I mean, do you, do you pray? Do you have a therapist? I mean, is you yoga? I mean... How can yeah. people uh, kind of follow what you're doing? Because it's hard out here. People have it really real is. And tough I, stuff. Yeah, and I feel like the last few weeks in my life have been really, really hectic. And I feel like we were, it was in the last stages and I felt like it was happening and I had anxiety and I just, I never really do. And I just, I, I got uh, an app that was like a calming app. Mm -hmm. I was just like searching and I just like took my time out to take a deep breath and just do that a few times and really like get it together. But I also, to me, the negativity, I mean, sometimes it does wear you down, but to me, it always pushes me through. And I always want to, I don't know if it's on purpose or not, but just, I always want to prove those people wrong. And, and I always go into a situation thinking of like the best case scenario and always 
thinking of the worst case scenario, but always trying to get that best case, mm -hmm. um, no matter what it is, no matter, you know, but there are times when it's a lot, when there's just so m many eyeballs on you and there's so much attention, positive and negative, both can like, one can like fill your head up too much. One can tear your spirit down. And it's like, just sometimes you have to tune it all out. Just take a deep breath. I don't have a therapist. Um, but you know, I have a really good supportive family and I think that we're kind of each other's therapists. Married to a creative genius. And a lot of us have creative folks in our lives and they sometimes get themselves in trouble and that kind of stuff. Yeah. As the partner of a creative genius who sometimes gets himself in trouble, yeah. what do you think the most important thing that you can do in that relationship to, to be supportive, to, to keep that? Yeah, um, I think just being that support system, you know, even if you don't see eye to eye and there's a lot going on, um, I think always being real and always, like we have like really good communication. So we always, no matter what it is, if I agree, if I don't agree, I'm always there. And I think he knows that. And, um, you know, it is tough when there's so, so everything's so public and, um, you know, especially even album time and staying up and helping, you know, just trying to get it done and helping that person get their creative ideas out. I think that is just really important is just to be supportive doesn't mean you agree with everything but it means that you're supportive and you're there to talk them through their situations and just i love him you know so it just it's kind of a no-brainer for me just to be there i think about the journey you're on now i mean you have 120 million instagram followers i mean that's bigger than most countries, I think, yeah, I mean, 60 million Twitter followers. I mean, you, you do have the ability to make a big impact. Now, some people will say, well, listen, you know, uh, I, I, I'm still not convinced. Just give people a, one more opportunity to understand that people grow and change. Yeah, I mean, I've just been through so much in my life that just it would, it, I, I get that whole like lifestyle of me of like being shallow and cars and stuff that we've you know who we were and that's just not who I am today and it doesn't mean that I don't like you know a flashy photo shoot and you know I made a joke I, I got this influencer award and in, uh, for fashion and I made a joke like I'm always naked how did I win this you know, <laughs> award for fashion you know and hey that's a part of me too but um this is a new part of me. And it doesn't mean that all of that other stuff has to go away and I'm this political person and I'm, you know, I am me and I care about people and I want to use my platform to help other people. It's not always about me. Well, you're off to a tremendous start, I'll tell you that. Thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs>